Now here I am with the disassembled components. Let's start with talking about the bare pump. So as I mentioned with the mechanical power section at the very beginning, you can just put a sprocket or a gear on this. It doesn't take a ton of torque to turn it. I can turn this by hand. Of course, I'm not pumping any fluid right now. And when you look down inside of the bare pump, you can see that this is a cam driven piston pump. So the theory of operation is somewhat similar to the way a G-Series pump works, if you're familiar with those, where you have a motor that just drives a single lobe cam and that strokes the piston pump. Same thing on a Lube Master, it's just a lot bigger. And then the adjustment hex here allows you to dial in the output per stroke. I already have an existing video that shows you how to perform that operation, but it makes for a very flexible pumping system because with that adjustment by the stroke, you can combine that with the two reduction ratios of the gear reducers and then the two speeds of motors that we offer. So you can combine a 1725 RPM or an 1140 RPM motor with either a 60 to one or a 10 to one ratio drive. And then you get a big variety of flow rates where you can get up to eight cubic inches or more and down to a small fraction of that if you do the combinations that yield the slowest speed on the drive shaft. One thing I wanna show you here too is this output manifold. There is an output manifold around this hex that has four quarter inch NPSF ports on it that receive NPT or NPTF fittings. The gauge port is up on top. When you order one of the systems that goes by the LM part number with four digits after the LM, then the gauge is always gonna be included. This is sold separately though if you buy the unit as individual pieces. And that's another thing that's unique to the Lube Master is that you can either order a complete assembly by the smart number or you can order the individual components and build it up yourself. But if you order the components individually, then you need to get one of these 557713 pressure gauges and install it yourself. Then on the bottom, this quarter inch port is normally where people put the relief valve. And that's another thing, just like on a G-Series pump, the relief valve is sold separately. So you need that because it's a safety device. So just make sure that you get your relief valve and install that into the port down here. And the, the valve choice depends on the application. And either of these sides can be used as the outlet. Most commonly, the side on my left is what's used as the outlet because all the rest of the mechanism is off to this side once it's all put together. But you can use this side as an outlet if for some reason it just fits better and maybe you want to just drop straight down and plumb it that way. So you do have the flexibility of using either one, but just make sure you plug the one that you don't use and only use one because if you try to use both, it'll take path of least resistance. So that's kind of all there is to the pump. It's actually pretty simple. And then on top of that, you're gonna put your reservoir. So this reservoir is not complete. It's just the tube and a gasket, but this is the steel option. And if you look at how thick this is, that is a beefy reservoir. So you can also see that this label has the old logo on it. And that's because this is the replacement tube. And with a, a reservoir that thick, you don't have to replace it very much. So this particular replacement tube has been in the warehouse for quite a while because you just don't need to replace these steel reservoirs. They are very tough. The other material we call plastic, but it's actually polycarbonate. So this is the material that your safety glasses are usually made of. My safety glasses are prescription and they still might be polycarbonate, but when you just get those disposable kind, those are typically a polycarbonate safety glasses. And it's a, because it's a tough material, it's a lot tougher than acrylic. And so this, is the tube for the plastic one and you can tell it's a lot taller than the steel while we offer both heights in both materials this is the 12 pound or 12 pint steel reservoir this is the 20 pound or 20 pint plastic reservoir now for oil the 12 and 20 pints is a pretty accurate it's a little bit rounded but it's a pretty accurate volume when you get to the grease reservoirs, the grease reservoirs where you have a spring and a follower plate inside, that spring and follower plate takes up almost half of the capacity because it's a very heavy spring so that it can push down heavy greases and feed them into the pump. So that one is gonna take up about half. On a 20 pound grease reservoir, it's closer to about 11 or 12 pounds of grease capacity. And then on the 12 pound, it's around six or seven pounds of 
actual grease capacity and when you convert to liters just divide by two because it's two pounds per liter most of the time. The other thing with reservoirs is the optional low level switches but I have a whole nother video where I cover these low level options extensively so I'm just going to refer you to that video to see more about low level options.